and behold, a lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbour to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Wow, good morning, good morning and blessings to you all, Jubilee, wherever you may be, either here in Enfield or JC or Woodgreen or Harlow or even maybe online. And of course, how could I forget, good morning to you all there in Jubilee Church, Ilford. Yes, I can hear that round of applause, that, that welcome. It's so good to be able to bring God's Word this morning. You know, I miss being with you uh, there in uh, Ilford, my family uh, here with me here in Enfield. So we do miss you, but we look forward to our fellowship together at our church family meal on Wednesday evening. I look forward to seeing you. And yes, if you don't have the Jubilee Church Ilford passport, don't even think about it. Don't come because you are not welcome. Well, we could arrange. We could arrange. So do get in touch with me. We might see if we can sneak you in there. It's great to hear uh, just the reports about New Day. I happen to be there on one of the days myself, and it's great to have had so many of our young people there. Uh, I was there with, uh, with uh, some of our young people from Ilford and a car load full of puff puffs from one of the aunties, but it was just amazing to be able to worship and to see thousands of young people and the testimonies. This is just a glimpse. What we've heard this morning is just a glimpse of all that God did there. So gr glory and great to hear that and glory be to to God, glory be to God for all that he did at New Day. Well, let's get straight into the word. Our summer continues, and uh, I hope you are making the most of the sunshine. Uh, you don't need to go to Spain. The Lord has blessed us with sunshine this summer here in England. And uh, as we carry on our summer here in Jubilee, we are going through the key themes in scriptures all across our sites for the next few weeks. We are having standalone sermons. So we started last week looking at the church where we looked and together learn about what the church really is. Well, today I'm going to make a shift and I'm going to be looking at the mission that Jesus Christ gave to his church. Here, talking about personal evangelism, personal evangelism. Now, this morning what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on a tool that you and I need in order for us to be effective in our personal evangelism. Here talking about kindness. You see, you and I have been sent, as you can see behind me, we have been sent to go and share with those who do not know the Lord, to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why we are here on earth. That's the reason why the Lord has placed each one of us in different spheres. That's why the Lord has called each one of us wherever we are to be sold and lied. And so we are being sent. And we are being commanded. We are being commanded to preach the good news, to be a witness for Jesus Christ. And so we need to do it. But without kindness, 
our personal evangelism will either be offensive to people or even be ineffective. But with this tool, kindness, our personal evangelism will be more powerful, will be effective. And with kindness, there will be so many doors of opportunities that will be opened to us for us to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I want to talk to you this morning about the power of kindness, the power of kindness. And I pray that your hearts are open as you receive God's word this morning. So why don't we just bow down, bow down our, hearts, our heads and just pray to God. Father, thank you. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you this morning that we can gather together to worship you, to raise our hands, to lift up our voices to you, to sing our songs of praise and just to, to, to exalt you and to honor you. And now as we sit at your feet to listen to your word, Father, I pray, would you speak to us? And I know you have anointed this word. I know you have anointed me to bring your word with power and authority to your people that we we, our lives might be changed, that we might be effective witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ. So bless us now today as we listen to your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, and everybody said, amen and amen. The power of kindness. Well, kindness can be underrated sometimes. Sometimes we can equate it to just being nice, to just being pleasant, you know, as, as though it was just mainly about smiling at people as we walk around on the streets. As though it was just about getting along with others, with our neighbors, with our friends. As though it was just about, you know, about being nice without uh, roughing feathers, rattling feathers. And so sometimes we can see it just as a mundane virtue. Other times... Kindness has a connotation of uh, meaning that someone is weak or taken advantage of when they exercise kindness. But actually, being kind often requires courage and boldness. It requires somebody to be courageous as we saw uh, in the attacks of uh, London, the London Bridge a few years ago. Why would someone put their life on the line? Why would someone step up and, and jump on a person who, has, uh, who, who is about to attack people but for kindness in their heart, but for being stirred up by kindness in their heart and not wanting to see an, another life hurt? And so they step out in boldness and kindness courage putting their life on the line you see at the very heart of kindness is the willingness to choose others above oneself above oneself at the heart of kindness is the emptying of one self for the sake of others, for the sake of others. We know, you and I know that there's somebody who did exactly that, that they emptied themselves. He emptied himself off of his glory. He left heaven and he stepped down into our world of time and space for the sake of others, for the sake of you and me. His name is Jesus and that's exactly what he did. He did it for you and for me. Can you say amen to that? Can you shout amen to that? That is the heart of kindness. So here's the thing. When you look in the Word of God, the Bible presents different and compelling portraits of kindness. Different aspects and different qualities of kindness that we find in Scripture. And that's what I want us to look at this morning. What is kindness according to Scripture? Well, where kindness is, you find patience. Where kindness is, there is patience. I don't know about you, but for me, I get frustrated when I've been standing in a queue for a very long time with my only few selected items. And you know, when I'm in a shop, I choose carefully which queue I'm going to stand. And if I see, especially, you know, if there's a very few people with few items in the baskets and I'm going to stand there, if it's going slow, maybe I'll go to another, another queue. And, uh, you know, when the queue where you were is going faster, you regret and you move back. 
But the thing that frustrates me is to see the cashier who is so slow. And usually they have this badge saying, training today or something like that. And they're taking their time when I'm in a rush. It frustrates me. I don't know about you. I am filled with rage at the drivers when I have been queuing for a long time and they're cutting, you know, the joining at the front. In fact, not long ago, I was coming off the 406 and I'm queuing to come on the 810. And all these drivers are cutting me in the front. And, you know, one of them comes and, you know, that, that thing where they do, they, they don't really want to look at you. You know, they concentrate like they're, you know, they're being very serious and you try to look at them. I did that and they couldn't even look and they want to cut in. And in that moment filled with rage, I'm trying to tell, get the other person in front so that I don't give them a chance. I felt the Lord say to me, be kind. Just let them in. Just let them join. Patience. When I'm tired at the, long of, uh, at the end of a very long day, I become very impatient with my children or with my wife. And so I begin to sow seeds of unkindness, maybe unkind words or unkind attitudes come out of my mouth. But I know that the Lord is calling me to put on, he says, as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, he says, put on compassionate heart. And he says, put on kindness, put on humility, put on meekness and patience. Colossians 3 and verse 12, where kindness is, you will find patience secondly where kindness is you see love i think it's mother teresa who said it is not how much we do but how much love we put in the doing it is not how much we give but how much love we put in the giving now mother teresa was known for loving the poor i mean she touched so many lives of the poor people and yet she's saying it's not about the giving it's not about the doing but how much love we put into the doing and the giving it's about love no wonder apostle paul when he writes to the corinthian church he would say to them he says if i give everything i have to the poor and even sacrifice my own body and boast about it everywhere on social media on the news and and to others to my neighbors i boast everywhere but if i do not love others i could have gained nothing and he goes on to say love is patient and love is kind so where there is kindness their love will be also. Thirdly, kindness. Where kindness is, there is compassion. There is compassion. The New Testament stories of Jesus Christ are full of acts of kindness. Jesus was touching lives. He was transforming lives. He was impacting lives. He was making a difference in people's lives. And every time he stepped out, he stepped out with an act, uh, uh, an act of kindness, what moved Jesus? It was compassion. It was compassion. There in your notes, you have Matthew 1, uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse 41. There it's a story of the leper that came to him and pleaded with Jesus, Lord Jesus, would you touch me? Would you touch me? And the Bible says, filled with compassion, he touched him and healed him. In Matthew 14 and, and, and verse, uh, verse 14, you find Jesus, it says, as he crossed over on the other side, there were crowds of people and there they had the sick. And as he looks at these people and, and the Bible says he was, he was filled with compassion. It wasn't being a famous evangelist that moved Jesus. It wasn't that he should feature in the BBC News, you know, the Bethlehem Broadcasting Corporation News. It wasn't that. It was because... Of compassion that's why he healed the sick when he fed the 4,000 hungry people what was it that moved him he himself he said in Mark chapter 8 and verse 2 he says I feel compassion for these people and so you find this phrase time and again moved with compassion moved with compassion all over the gospel you find it uh, for example in the story of the two blind men in Matthew chapter 20 it said moved with compassion Jesus touched their eyes and immediately the Bible says they regained their sight and they followed him they followed him hey you want to see people follow Jesus Christ as a result of your personal witness then you will have to touch people's lives with the compassion of Jesus in your heart 
with the compassion of Jesus in your heart. I guess for me, the story that moves me is uh, uh, the story that uh, Dr. Luke records in Luke chapter 19. He says that when Jesus was approaching the city of Jerusalem, the Bible says he saw the city and he wept over the city, saying, if only you knew, if only you knew the things which make for peace. Jesus was weeping over the city. When you see wars around you, do you weep out of compassion? When you see children displaced from their families, maybe families put out of their homes and running away from wars as we've been seeing in the recent, in the recent months, do you weep for the peace of those cities, for the peace of those nations, for the peace of those countries? When you see people suffering, as you turn on your telly and see the news, do you look away? You can't be bothered to look at it. Oh, it's, it's not those poor images of those skinny children again. Or when you see people hurting, are you moved with compassion? Or is your heart numb to it? Is it numb to it? Where there's com uh, kindness, there is compassion. How about this one? Where there's kindness, there's goodness. For me, this is the greatest act of kindness that Jesus ever showed humanity. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 4 and 5, we read these words. It says that, but when the goodness and the loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy. According to His own mercy. You see, we show goodness to others, because we ourselves have received goodness and kindness and mercy from God. And so we do it because we want others to experience the same goodness that we ourselves have experienced from God. You know that guy you don't like at your place of work. That guy who is always nasty to you. The guy who is not kind to you. Are you saying I show him goodness? Yes, you do. How about... My team members who go behind my back and they go to my boss and they have ruined my career. They have ruined my employment. They, are you saying I, 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 am, I, I, I become good to them? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's why Paul says if your enemy is hungry, what should you do? Feed them. If they are thirsty... If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. And he says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Romans chapter 12 and verse 20 to 21. You see, because God's goodness to us, the undeserving people, because of his goodness to us, although we didn't earn it, because of that, we too will be kind. We will show good. We will do good to our enemies. If we treat our enemies with kindness, are they going to act the same towards us? Are they going to treat us the same way? Probably not. But you see, if we treat them the same way as they treat us, then we are not allowing Christ to live in us. And we are not allowing his love to flow through us to others. And so we must be kind in doing so. We will not overcome evil will not be overcome by evil rather, but we will overcome evil with good. So where there's kindness, there's goodness. Let's look at one more quality. Where there's kindness, there's forgiveness. There's forgiveness. What are you saying? After all that they have done to me, I forgive them? Yes, of course you forgive them. Because the word says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Be tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. That's what we saw in Titus. The greatest act of kindness we received from God was when he died on the cross and he cried out those words, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And in Jesus going to the cross, in Jesus giving up his life, we have received forgiveness. And so, we too forgive. You see, 
when we harbor unforgiveness in, in our hearts, the love of God is not in our hearts. We have not truly known the kindness of God that he gave to us. We haven't really grasped it. But if we truly know that he himself forgave us of all our wrongs, we will have it in our hearts to have kindness, to forgive, to forgive the people who wrong us. So that is what biblical kindness is. Now I want us to look at the sources of kindness. Where does kindness come from? Where does kindness come from as you see there in your notes? Well, first of all, every human being has got something of kindness inside them. There's kindness that is built, it is inbuilt in the inside of you. So A, it is in the DNA of humanity. Each and every human being has got something of, of, of kindness in their hearts. You see, kindness is very fundamental to human existence. And when we were thrown into the world, you know, as newborns, we were enriched with the kindness and the compassion of our parents nurturing us for all those years. You see, as a baby, as a child, we were powerless. We were helpless. Even at birth, we were dependent on, on, the, on the kindness of our caregivers. We were dependent on them to provide and meet each and every need that we had. The first time I held my, my baby, my, my daughter, nobody prepared me for what the first, the, the first experience would look like of changing the first nappy. Now, for those of you who have had babies, yeah, I can see some people laughing because you know what the experience was like. For the dads like me who had no experience whatsoever, when you open that thing, my goodness, when you see that thing, you, everything in you wants to run away. But guess what? My daughter from then on up to today, she has experienced my kindness. I have changed thousands of nappies. And now my son is experiencing the same. We experience kindness from birth. Therefore, kindness is inbuilt in the framework of us. In fact, some of us, if I asked you, you would say, well, I was taught to be kind from my grandmother. I learned how to be kind from my parents. They demonstrated kindness to me. So it's in the inside of you. It is in the inside of you. When you see images or videos of a, a guy who jumps up in front of a, he jumps on a, in front of a moving train because uh, the, the buggy has, you know, has, has, has fallen in, in the middle of the truck. What is it that moves somebody to do that? It's because they've got kindness inside of them. They've got kindness inside of them. That's why Jesus said, you know, when he was asking his hearers in Matthew 7, he says, which one of you, if your son asked you for bread, you would give them a stone? If they asked you of a fish, you would give them a serpent. He says, if you who are evil, you know how to be kind, to, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you good things if you ask him? Listen to me. There's a seed of kindness in you. Therefore, sow it. You need to sow it to those around you who are in need. Secondly, it is in our society. It is displayed everywhere in our society. You see, the Pharisees and the scribes, they asked Jesus at one time, why do your disciples walk around, uh, you know, in, in, they, they walk according to the tradition of the elders, they, they eat with defiled hands. And Jesus said to them, you have fine ways of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. So, you know, you see, in our society, every person knows, they know what is good. They know what is wrong and what is right. And everybody knows that it just doesn't work if everyone just hates each other. It doesn't work if everybody hurts one another. We know this. It's, it's in our society. You see, there's a tilt in every society for good there's a tilt in every society to make wherever we are in every society to make everything work for the good of all tradition tradition a few years ago i'm sure you saw the photos going viral of a guy called patrick hutchinson 
occurring. You know, it was in the time when the uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, racial, uh, racial issues were rampant in our, not just our nation, but around, across the world. And here's a guy in the front of the protest when there's hate and, you know, and, and, and here's a guy who is wounded and a black guy would lift this white guy on his bleeding white guy on his shoulders and take him to safety. Why? That's kindness displayed in our society right there. When there's crisis in our, in our society, you will see the kindness of people. You see, I am amazed at the kindness of people, especially during this season. The amount of people every time I'm here at Jubilee Center in our offices, you know, at our food bank here, or even in Ilford at our food bank, I'm amazed at the kind of people, the, the, the amount of food that people donate. Why? It's because they don't want another person to go hungry. And you know, some of these people, they're not even Christians. They're not believers in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they have kindness in their hearts. They have kindness in their hearts. Kindness is right in there in society. We see it all around. When there's an earthquake somewhere. The amount of volunteers who will go and just volunteer their time. We've seen it, you know, in Ukraine. People have been flying, giving up their time and going there to give up their time. And, and they're tra- you know, you spending their money to go there and volunteer. Why? It's because it's right there in our society. But more importantly, for us as believers, however, there's a difference. For a Christian, kindness is a gift of the Spirit of God. Spiritual gifts are freely given to us and they are distributed by the Spirit of God. They are dis- distributed by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, our kindness, the true kindness, is Spirit produced. There's something of the love of God that is found in the heart of every believer. There's something of the love of God that is su- that supernaturally stirs up our hearts. It stirs us into action when we see people suffering, when we see pain, when we see people in need all around us. You know, when we stir up into action, the fruit of that is life-giving. Otherwise, you would think, what's the difference between me as a Christian showing kindness to the person in need and to someone else just doing it as alms or because, you know, they're doing it out of their religious duties when they do not know Jesus and they belong to another religion? Well, for us, it is different. It is different. That's why Paul says, we prove ourselves by our purity, by our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 6. Our kindness is from the Spirit of God, stirring up our hearts. And as he does that, we become sensitive to what he is showing us. Look at that homeless person. And you are stirred in your heart for you to buy them a drink. For you to buy them a food. Look at your neighbor. They are hurting. They need somebody to listen to them. And you are moved. You, 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 you step out and you listen to them. You look at your colleagues in, the, in your team at the place of work. And what do you do? You give up your time for them. You offer to pray for them. You do something about what you are doing. And as we respond to the Spirit of God, lives are touched. Lives are changed. And lives are transformed. Come on, can you shout a mentor? that indeed our kindness is born from the spirit of God that's why uh, Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 he says that the fruit of the spirit he says it's love it is joy it is peace it is patience it's kindness it is goodness it is goodness he who is one with the spirit of God will bear the fruit and he himself will bear the fruit in us as well so we've looked at what kindness is we've looked at where kindness comes from and now I want us in the next few moments I just want to be very practical and speak to you about some expressions of kindness how how do we go about showing kindness to others how do we go about showing kindness to others well In the passage that was read to us from Luke chapter 10, we have a story, a well-known story there of uh, the Good Samaritan, a story that Jesus Christ himself shared uh, with, with his disciples. 
And the first thing that you see in that story that we heard where a man was on, on the journey and as he's on the journey, the robbers come upon him and uh, they beat him up and they leave him there on the road and he's almost dead. And here comes the pastor. You know, he's driving his limousine, going for a church service at 8.30 because he wants to get to church in good time. And as he drives, he looks through the window and sees this man on the side, almost half dead. And what does he do? He says, well, I have pre-service prayer meetings to attend. And so he drives past. And here comes the worship leader, you know, with his guitar, ready to go and lead worship at the church. As he's going, he looks and sees this man. And what does he do? He bypasses the man and he carries on to the service. But not so with the good Samaritan as he's coming as we heard. And so the first thing that you see, how did this man show kindness? Firstly, it was personal. It was personal. So we are called to show kindness personally. The good Samaritan didn't wait for anyone else to help me, to help him. He didn't start complaining about the pastor guy or the worship leader guy who bypassed uh, this, this man who was wounded. But he took it upon himself. He took personal responsibility and bent down to reach out to the hurting man, to the one who is nearly dying. Now, I don't know if he had gone through first aid training through uh, St. John's Ambulance. Or, but the Bible says he bound his wounds and then he put him, he lifted him and put him on his animal and he took him to an inn. You see, we are, sh we are to show kindness to the hurting people. We are to show kindness to the broken hearted. We are to show kindness to the wounded. That's what the Bible says, that the spirit of the Lord is upon us for he has anointed us to bring good news to the poor. He has anointed us to bind up the broken hearted. And all it takes in binding up the, the broken hearted is to open our eyes just like this good Samaritan did. You see, when you open your eyes, then you see the suffering and the pain that people are going through. You see, the good Samaritan like the other two, he could have said, I'm busy right now. I've got somewhere to get to. Friends, if we are willing to show kindness, if we are to open our eyes, then we have to be willing to be inconvenienced for the sake of the hurting soul. You see, for the good Samaritan, it costed him money, his money. He paid his money when he got to the inn. It costed him his time. He had to put off his journey until the following day. Sometimes when we want to show kindness, it will cost us. It will cost us our time. It will cost us money. It will inconvenience us for the sake of others. I remember there was a time. I had gone to Costco uh, to, to buy, I think we were having our summer, uh, our picnic in the park in Ilford, uh, as you would have seen on social media, which we had last week. And we got the food and as we're coming out, there was an elderly lady, you know, with, uh, with uh, uh, her bags of shopping and trying to get to the, to the bus. And I said to her, would you like some help? And uh, she said, oh, yes, please. And so, you know, I put her in my car and she said, oh, um, I said, actually, would you like me to drop you off? And could you, would you believe it? She was going the opposite direction. <laughs> and I had to drive. I had to go out of my way to take her and drop her off at her home and then go uh, back to, my, to, to, to our place. So you see, sometimes when you offer help, it will inconvenience you. One way to be kind is to open our eyes and act when you see someone in need. See, opening our eyes means noticing when others are suffering. And it might be just a kind word. Or just putting your hand on their shoulder. Or just a listening ear to the neighbor who is, who is going through suffering and pain. It could be just opening up your door and welcome them in to come and have a cup of tea as you listen to them. It is about helping carry the burden Carry the Lord for those that are burdened on their shoulders. Acts of kindness. Acts of kindness as individuals. And that's what 
God is calling us. Church, there's so much that God is calling us to do. And how is he calling us to do it? It is by individuals wherever God has placed us. Imagine if an army of believers in different places where God has us, if one is showing a kind, you know, a kind word to this one, another one is offering a kind thought to someone else, another person is giving a, 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 an act, a random act of kindness. Imagine how much seeds of kindness we will sow everywhere, everywhere that we are in our communities. Imagine how many lives would be touched and changed. This week and this season, I challenge you to determine in your heart to be kind. How about maybe celebrate someone you love? How about maybe giving an honest compliment to your spouse or your children or your parents? How about maybe sending an email Sending an email to, uh, to show how much you appreciate them. Or maybe that card, writing a card to your teacher or to your boss thanking them for all that they do. Or telling someone how special they are to you. How about writing posted notes in your office and just appreciating your team and everything that they do uh, to contribute to, to your work. How about being kind to the PPI caller this week? Instead of you slamming that phone, but you become kind to them. You speak words of blessing upon them. How about writing kind words or kind words on social media? How about refusing to gossip? How about donating clothes you don't need or items that you don't need anymore to a charity shop or to someone else in need? These are just few practical ways in which we can show kindness. But there's so much more that we can do to show kindness. Secondly, we can show kindness on a corporate level. Show kindness corporately. You see, Paul says, I planted the seed. And he says, Apollos watered it. But God, it is God that made it grow. You know, I'm grateful to grandmothers who prayed, who planted seeds of prayer for years and years and years. I'm, I'm grateful to God for that mother who prayed their children in into the kingdom. And I'm grateful to the friend who invited them along to New Day. And as a result of that, they got to hear the gospel for the first time. Everybody doing their part corporately together. You see, in the story that we heard, the Good Samaritan did his part, but he took this man to the inn, and the, inn, uh, the innkeeper did his part. So everybody was doing something in being kind to this poor man who was wounded. A few weeks ago, I was at the home of one of our members in, in Ilford, and in there... Her whole room is filled with uh, her, her friends from the small group and is thanking them with tears in her heart as she had been through a difficult journey of, uh, of, uh, of chemotherapy. She had gone through, she had cancer, and, uh, uh, and as she came to the end of, of this journey, she was thanking them for their kindness. Some people brought meals to her. Some people drove her. In fact, she was talking about her neighbor who every time drove, to her, uh, drove her to the hospital for treatment. What an amazing act of kindness. And I'm grateful to God that here in our church, you know, small groups, that some small groups have been donating. I know in Ilford, some small groups have been donating uh, uh, food and, and, uh, and uh, uh, groceries, sending them over to Ukraine. And I know, I think it's the cyclist group that, that has been um, uh, uh, donating money. You know, they've been uh, collecting money and uh, raising money and, and sending them uh, in need. So doing it together. Doing it together. I know of a group of young uh, adults in Ilford, again, who they used to go around uh, in the evenings and just give food to the homeless people in different places where these homeless people are found. And I thank God for each one of you. I thank God for small groups. And imagine if we were doing it together, together as a community of believers. Imagine if we didn't have to wait for the church to do the community barbecue, but as small groups in wherever that God has placed us, we would do a community barbecue for our neighbors and invite them. Imagine if we, we would show kindness to the single mom and, 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 and help them with their children or to the, uh, to the elderly who doesn't know how to do online shopping and you would do their food shopping for them and taking to them and everyone doing it. Imagine so much love. I want to encourage you and challenge you at the same time that you do this uh, consistently as a lifestyle, as a lifestyle. 
Number three, showing kindness as a church family. I thank God that here as a church, we have a, a culture of showing kindness. There's a whole ministry called Sent. And in this ministry, we have got different strands. We've got people who are bound in chains to addiction, being set free and helped through that. And there's, a, there's an army of volunteers who come to do that. As you heard me say earlier on, we've got Food Bank. And in Food Bank, there's you know, the hundreds of volunteers who give up their time and, and to come and, uh, and, and sort out the food and help people people uh, who come here for food and there's so many we've got uh, rework I believe which has got different volunteers who help people who have lost confidence and they're not able to go back to work they haven't been able to go back to work and they help them with uh, with their interviews and with how to do their CVs and things like that and in the church in the church I'm grateful to God that as the church we have this culture in Ilford, we have a cafe of hope where the homeless people come every Friday night. And uh, uh, Christopher, uh, one, of, uh, one of the guys in Ilford, together with Guy Lester and Roy Zidas, they, they provide from the soup kitchen, they provide hot meals for them and they provide with clothes. And, and there's so many ways in which as a church family, we can show kindness to those in need. We've got befriended where are people who would otherwise be on their own. And you know, people are lonely. There's so many needs, especially in this time of mental health uh, mental health issues and so on. people feel lonely emotionally they are in need spiritually physically and a befriended would go and just to be with these people just to keep them company and you know if you are here today and the spirit of God is tapping you on your shoulder that you need to be a part of this and you don't know how to go about it, you just need to go on the church app on our church app there and it will show you how you can be how you can be involved and how you can play a part or just speak to your small group leader and ask them how you can, you can take a part in showing kindness to those in need. To those in need. You may be here as I'm drawing to the final point now. And you may be thinking, what is the point of all this? I want to say to you that there's power in kindness. There's power in showing kindness. Kindness is no small thing. It is very powerful. Kindness changes everything. It is a game changer. I have seen kindness melt the coldest of hearts. And I have seen kindness change situations. You see, where we use this tool very well, it will bring tremendous fruit both in our lives and in the lives of those around us. It will open doors of, of opportunities, especially in the summer where everyone is open and everybody's talking. You know, as you go out in the park and as you talk to people, you have so many opportunities of you being able to invite your kids, friends for a sleepover or you have so many opportunities for birthday parties and invite their friends and be able to show, you know, be able to connect with their, with their, with, with their parents and with, with with your neighbors, whomever it is, so many opportunities. You see, as we open ourselves to the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, when we ask Him to produce in us kind hearts that overflow through kind lips and kind hands, there are benefits. There are benefits of kindness. There are rewards and there are results. A, I just want to say this: that it blesses you as a person. It blesses your relationships. It blesses, it benefits you. you. You feel, you are filled with joy. You are filled with goodness. You are, you, you just love it that you are being able to touch other people's lives. There's no greater blessing than giving to others in need, out of a heart of kindness. And you see, when you choose to have a generous heart that reaches out to meet the needs of those around you, God begins to pour his provision into your life into your life. That's what Proverbs, Proverbs 19 and verse 17 says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. He will reward them for what they have done. Secondly, you have a sense of purpose. How about that for a reward? A sense of purpose. I think in the heart of every human being, you want to be a blessing to someone else. You just don't want to go to work for yourself, for that pay rise, for you to become the next person for in the ladder. People who are fulfilled, people who have a sense of purpose are people who live for others. They lay down their lives for the sake of others. Proverbs 21 and verse 21 says, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life. 
righteousness, and honor. You see, people who have a sense of purpose are those who live not for themselves, but for others. And finally, kindness becomes a pathway. It becomes a pathway for the gospel. It opens opportunities for the gospel. And how about that for results for us, Jubilee? How about that for change, change lives? Souls saved. And that's what we see in the early church. That out of their, their generous hearts, when they were kind and they met the needs of others, they, 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 the, the people who were in need, they, they says those that had plenty sowed all that they had and they gave to those in need. And the Bible says when they did that, the Lord added to their numbers day after day those who were being saved. Imagine that would be us, that the Lord would, ask, would add to us day by day those that are being saved as they see a personal witness in our lives, as we step out with acts of kindness to those in need. To those in need. Would you stand to your feet? Would you raise to your feet right now? Everywhere, all across our, our screens, all across the different sites. And for those of you who are online, would you just stand to your feet? I say to you here that there's something deep in the heart of every human being, especially for a believer. There's something deep in the heart. There's this desire inside there to want to help others. There's something of that that brings joy. You know, at Courage, at our Courage conference, a lady walked up to me. I said, oh, pastor, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. And she pulled up a buggy to me, and in the buggy was a baby. And this lady said, Pastor, when you preached last time, there's something that you said that made a resolve in my heart that I was going to lay down my life, my, my comfort, and I was going to step out and live my life for another. And so I stepped out of my comfort zone and I adopted, here is the fruit. And now she's making a difference to the life of that baby. I talk to so many people who have fostered other children and the joy it brings to them to see that as a Christian, they are able to make a difference in the lives of these children who otherwise would be displaced. They are being able to pray for them, to provide for them. What an amazing thing. And you see, Jubilee, sometimes selfishness can make us focus on our own desires that we become oblivious to the needs around us. But friends, People are hurting everywhere. All you need to do is you just need to open your eyes and you'll see so much pain and suffering around you. Your neighbors, your people, in, in your department, in, work, in your workplace, there's suffering everywhere. People are poor, others are sick, others are lonely. People are emotionally wounded, spiritually in need. And you see, a simple act of kindness to a hurting person can make that individual feel loved and valued sad thing is we can get caught up we can get caught up in the trap of striving to have more and more for ourselves but my prayer is that with God's help and by his grace Jubilee that we will strive to excel in giving to others instead of receiving from others can you say amen to that no, can you shout amen to that yes and if we do so we will find that God makes sure that we have enough to meet our own needs. But not just our needs. But we will also have plenty to be able to give away to others. A person who is a river of blessing, he never runs dry. I've experienced that for my own life. He never runs dry. With every eye closed in this moment, I just want to speak to you. If you are here today and perhaps you are visiting family or you, you are in the area and you wanted to find a church and you find yourself under the sound of my voice. You came to church today, but you do not know Jesus. I want to say to you that if you are here and you don't know the Lord, that the kindness and love of God, our Savior, it appeared for you. He saved you. 
not because of righteous things that you had done. You know yourself. You know your own lives. It's not the good things that you had done, but because of His mercy. And He brought you here today that you might hear that by His kindness, by His mercy, He died for you. And today, you can have a relationship with Him. And all you have to do is call out on His name. It's reach out to him and say this prayer. Why don't you just maybe raise your hand. You lift your hand. Yeah, I, I can see a few hands. I can see a few hands. Thank you, Lord, for those hands. Thank you for that boldness to step out. Keep raising them high. Keep raising them high. And as you are doing that, somebody from the stewarding team is going to come to you and they will bring you a pack that just helps you on this journey that you are beginning today. Keep them high. Keep raising them high. And you know what, Jubilee, would you join me? I want us to pray this prayer. Let, let's join every person who has raised their hand to, to say this prayer. For, let's say together, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you showed me kindness. I thank you that you showed me grace. I thank you that you showed me mercy. And I thank you that you stepped down and you reached out to me and you saved me. Today, I give my life to you. Today, I give my heart to you. I repent from my sins. I ask, Lord Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you come into my heart today and make me a child of God? Fill me with your spirit and help me to live for you. Help, help me to be a disciple that is sent out to go and show kindness and goodness to others. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's applaud the Lord, shall we? We're going to close by this song. Sing out to the Lord with all your heart as we worship the Lord. Come on, let's worship King Jesus.
enjoyed the service, Jubilee. May you enjoy the rest of your summer. Have a great rest of your summer. Yeah.